Hi all, uh, and welcome back to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Uh, today I want to give you uh, six really, really good tips to become an even more successful diving instructor. Some of the most important things that I found out is that if you have certain attributes, that these attributes can really help you to not only move up the ladder in your own career as a diving instructor, but of course turn other people into amazing scuba divers. Um, for the ones that just got here, uh, my name is Marcel van den Berg and I am a Petty Platinum Course Director. I have taught thousands of students around the world and uh, I am still teaching actively monthly IDCs uh, for filling people's dreams to become a diving instructor. If you want to learn a little bit more about those IDC courses that I teach, you can find more information in the description below. Now, for now, before we start, uh, hopefully you can uh, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you will get an update every time we upload a new video. Also, if you really like the six tips that I'm about to give you, please don't forget to hit that like button on this video because that is what helps this video to move up a little bit higher on Google ranking, which now will be easier for other people to find. And hopefully we can help even more people uh, with these tips to become more successful. Now, these are not the only tips, of course, that are out there. There are so many more tips. So I would love to hear some of your tips. Or what do you think about my tips in the comments below whenever you finish watching this? Now, without any further ado, let's go into tip number one. best attribute to have from all of the six i just want to start with it straight away is by far having an amazing attitude now i know that you might go like attitude is more like a combination of some of the attributes that we're about to discuss and that is absolutely true however it all starts with attitude because if if your attitude is wrong as a diving instructor then um all the other attributes will not work or, or, or even worse, they might work against you as well. Um, a good attitude is a bit opinionated, right? And, and I think that's one of the reasons why we have some differences in the world. You know, sometimes people think that doing thing A is good and while the other person thinks that's really wrong and, and they like they like that you do something else. Um, however, after teaching thousands of students myself uh, and um, also seeing other instructors teaching a lot of students, I have noticed that some of those attitudes are, are are sort of more attractive to most students in the world. So I, I don't think you can make everyone always happy, but if you strive to get some of the best attitude out there, then you also will make the most amount of your students happy. Uh, some people say, yeah, well, depends a little bit where you're from. It depends maybe on your background, on the way you're raised, how many friends you had and all that kind of stuff. And of course it really forms your attitude, but I, I've seen people coming from really bad backgrounds with fantastic attitudes and I've seen people from extremely good uh, backgrounds with some really bad attitudes. So I think that we're all a clean slate and with a little bit of effort we can really work on getting a really good attitude. And that same attitude, that same good attitude uh, works for people all around the world from also different backgrounds and uh, different religions and, and, and different opinions out there. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna focus on actually discussing uh, a few of those other attributes which are all part of that attitude sort of like uh, uh, area. And once that will work out well, uh, you're gonna be a lot more successful. Now, one thing is very important though, is that if you don't have a fantastic attitude or you, most of the time actually you don't actually know that you have a, a bad attitude, um, then th th w what happens is that we sometimes have a tendency then to sort of f fake it or, or want to lie about it. And, and, and I've seen that with instructors as well. They have these really fake big smiles. They're trying to be super nice to their students and trying to be uh, a better person with that. Uh, but usually the reasons behind it are wrong. You know, they just want to maybe sell more courses. They want to maybe sell more uh, um, uh, diving equipment packages and stuff like that. So we, we have this what we call a fake good attitude in this dive industry as well. And um, it is slightly better than a, than, you know, a, a bad attitude from the start. 
but it's it's definitely not what's going to make you super successful and 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 you see that really over time as well um now of course the bad attitude those are just people like uh, a lot of these i don't know if you've noticed them already like this sort of military style commando way of teaching instructors you know and they they just go hey come over here and put your equipment there and don't touch that and oh my god why are you breathing water into your nose you know are you uh, i can't maybe say the word right now but are you stupid or something i've heard it before uh people very quickly of course um uh, have a bad time uh they cry they want to quit they don't want to do it anymore and it can even become dangerous as well because you know if you stress out someone way too much and then you sort of you know force them on the water to do skills uh, I can I can see that going going wrong quite quickly. Um, going back to the one that maybe has that fake attitude, then they won't do that. They won't scream at people. You know, they're usually very oh hi yes okay don't worry about breathing into your nose ha 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 happens all the time yeah just try to learn to breathe out you're gonna be fine. I, you see, it works better than the first one. But what's not good about this as well is that sometimes people just don't believe it and they don't trust it. Um, but also, you know, when they're on the water, we have a, those instructors have a tendency of not caring too much about those students. So they, they, they're doing things fake at the right moment, but they're not always there 100 percent. And maybe they leave them a little bit quicker alone and things like that on the water. And then things still can go wrong uh, quite quickly. Um, and of course, customer service is just out of the window anyway with these kind of people. Um, but the ones with the absolutely amazing attitudes, the ones that that that, you know, they love to teach, they love to be around people, they love to make them better. And and. Y they, they have all the patience in the world to do so. Those are the people, the diving instructors, uh, that people trust. And, and, and when people trust you as a diving instructor, th that's the word, trusting you, they will, they will follow you to the, I want to say end of the earth, but maybe uh, end of the ocean, I, I don't know. And, and I think that's very special as well, you know, and you, you, you give people um, a trust and that's fantastic. And they will do anything, uh, wh whatever you say. So to be honest, your teaching becomes easier too, and your life becomes easier because you know when people trust you and they want to follow you, they listen better. They're always on time. They're excited about doing the next thing. And, and trust me, your your courses become easier to teach as well, which helps improving your attitude again because you're just happy in general, right? So anyway, attitude number one, super important. Uh, don't fake it, uh, but definitely don't have a bad attitude. But a good attitude really works. Now. Um, for tip number two, for one of the best attributes to have, I think as a diving instructor, is being very, very, very passionate, which is part of a good attitude. So let me explain to that to you right now. So number two of one of the best attributes a diving instructor can have is being passionate. Um, th there are so many different attributes out there but passionate must be very very high on the list in becoming more successful uh and 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 again you know being passionate about something is not i think something you you really can learn um it's not it's not something you can read in a book um i mean some people can inspire you to become more passionate but it's, it's one of those attitude things again you know some people some people have that in them and if, if, if you are a nice person, uh, so you already have the positive energy, but now you like something, you are going to have a passion for it. And you just want to share that with the world. Like, for example, you know, somebody might, might be really, really passionate about, you know, video games. And, and they might be talking to another person who is not so passionate about video games. Um, I'm actually a little bit besides a diver. Uh, a bit of a nerd when it comes down to video games and trust me i had my shares of people saying oh my god that's for kids you know and uh you're a course director you shouldn't play video games that kind of stuff right and but the thing is is if you're passionate about that video game and you're going to be talking about that even to people that are not passionate like i just said even those people start to become oh uh, i never thought about it that way and oh maybe maybe that game is cool or maybe i'm going to try it out later i'm probably not going to tell anyone but maybe I do want to try it out now. So being passionate about something is very catching and it's very inspiring for other people to, to become passionate now as well about something or at least want to give it a try uh, when they do it. Uh, a great example for, for this in, in, in good or bad teachers or, or less good teachers, you know, I, I had this physics teacher in school and as much as I did like physics to a certain point, 
um, because of, uh, of of all the science fiction behind it. You know, I again a bit of a nerd, so I love the whole Star Trek. I love the whole Star Wars. I and 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 that's where 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 physics and stuff really comes into play. But when you go to school, I've I've learned that you don't learn instantly about you know building warp drives and visiting other planets, which was a bit sad. You you have to kind of start with those uh, with those basic equations. And um, uh, the the first physics teacher I had was not passionate at all. So it, it was very hard, not only for me, but for others uh, to, 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 to learn and to want to learn. You know, and when we got home, nobody wanted to do that homework, right, for, for physics because it was so boring. We started with the fun stuff first, and then usually we got so tired of the fun stuff that you sometimes didn't even do your physics homework. But, w but then we got a replacement. So that physics teacher, he got, uh, sadly though, he got a bit ill, so he had to, uh, he had to uh, be at home for around six months. So we got his replacement uh, physics teacher, and he was like so passionate, uh, which was amazing. And, and he really uh, t talked with stories as well, which I think really works well. And then w what he did, he, he kind of sort of like, every time we had like a boring equation that somebody didn't understand, he kind of sort of like, I got a cool story behind it and, and, and did related it sometimes to, okay, not now guys, but this is the start of one day maybe building that engine to go to other stars, if you guys think that's cool, right? And, and all of us were like, like listening like this. Um, and, and that made us do their homework the first thing when we got back. Uh, we were talking about it in our own spare time and, and a lot of us not only got really good grades, but uh, some of us even, even continued with physics for the rest of their career. So it was very inspiring for people to even change their careers. And, 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 and you can see this, this, this passion thing is for video games, it's for, it's for teaching physics, but it's for everything. That's what I want to say. You know, if you're working in a restaurant and you're going to explain passionately about that plate, uh, that dish that's, that's now on the menu, then people are just want to eat it, you know, and they're probably going to like it better. In diving, are we passionate? Uh, of course we are as scuba divers. Uh, I have rarely met um, in my life a scuba diver that uh, hated fish. It's like, you know, you come back from a dive, it's like, oh my God, guys, how was it? Wasn't that fantastic? And, and this one person sits and goes like, I hated it. It's like, oh, why do you hate it? Were you a bit scared of the current or something? Because there was no current, it was crystal clear, it was fantastic. No, I saw blue fish, I hate blue fish. Me. No, I, I don't think that um, that happens a lot. Uh, of course, there's always a hater somewhere, but I even divers with the worst attitudes, they, they, they still really love fish and they love corals, you know? And, 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 and try to turn that passion then um, by talking about it with your students. So if you feel that you're an instructor that's not so outgoing like some instructors are and, and, and people are sometimes maybe a little bit more bored with you than maybe with somebody else, then you don't have to start learning all these jokes and stuff. That does help, we're gonna talk about that soon, but just be, just be a bit more passionate. Um, and share that passion with your students, you know. Uh, sit down, open up that, that fish book in the end of the dive and just talk to them and say, guys, did you recognize any of that fish that we saw today? Like, which one? Oh, I recognize this one. What's that? And you go, oh, that's a cool fish. It's called a trigger fish. And they go, oh, trigger fish, yeah. And then instead maybe about going all these horror stories that you hear out there, like trigger fish, they hurt you or they attack you, whatever. Um, maybe, maybe just say that it's a bit of a grumpy fish. You know, it's a really cool fish, but a bit grumpy sometimes. And... You know, if you get into his territory, he might chase you out. And but if you show it respect, then it will just do that for a moment. And and then later, you know, you swing around, you see him again, and he might not be so aggressive anymore. And you can really enjoy one of the most beautiful fish that are out there. You know, T telling these stories to people uh, love to hear that instead of instantly, oh, that's a trigger fish. You know, we we don't like them. They they can attack us. Come on, you know, you're a lot bigger than that fish. So it's it's how you share that passion with your students. Uh, which, which makes you uh, different as well as an instructor. Um, in learning a little bit more about this fish, you don't have to be a scientist. I mean, uh, just some, some cool little stories, you know? Some fish, they, uh, they change sex. Some fish, they uh, eat specific things, which is really cool. There's all these cool, really symbiotic relationships between uh, certain creatures on the water. Um, uh, in between shrimps and fish, or even different species, anemones, and uh, the, the clownfish, the nemos. Uh, you know, just, just Google it. Just Google a bit of that information. You love to watch it anyway yourself. And, and on the dive boat, just share that information with them. Um, and people are on it, eat it up like the best sandwich in the world. 
Um, when you're passionate as well, try to look people in the eyes too, because the eyes, they, they, they stream that passion. And then you can see again, if it's real or not. You know, some people try to fake passion a little bit, but it doesn't always work that well, right? You do have to be passionate about it. Um, I, I love personally night dives. Night dives are, are one of the best things for me. And um, I always had a very high continuing education where, where people after the open water course like to do the advanced course as well. And there's, there's of course a lot of different reasons why uh, so many people like to do the next course. But, but one of the biggest ones that I've always heard was when I told my night dive story in the open water dive course, you know, uh, my adventure, my experience, what I feel when I go on the night dive, people say, I absolutely love to listen to the story. They love to, they, they, they feel that they're there. They feel that they're on the night dive. And, and, and I always say like, we're landing on another moon on another planet. And you know, I, th 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 that just makes people go, oh my God, I want to go to another planet. I can on this night dive, you know, I have to just do one more course or something like that. And two more days I can do it. And, um, and people want to do it. But then in the end, when we do it, a lot of them, they do come up extremely happy or sometimes even uh, a bit of a scream here and there, or even a tear I've seen, a uh, happy tear. Um, because y you, you, you really gave them that passion as well. You know, and that's another video later again, where I'm going to give some tips about how to do certain dives a certain way for people to, to feel that they're in this movie, in this adventure with a beginning, uh, a story, you know, and an end in the end as well. But that, that's for a video another day. So anyway, I don't want to talk too long about this passion again. I can talk about passion forever, but uh, I think you got some really good examples uh, that passion is very, very important. And remember, that's not the hardest one for us because we're already passionate. You just have to tell your, your students this. Yeah? So uh, if you want to make a little bit more money as an instructor, if you're trying to get people to do the next course or to, to do the equipment, then don't do it for the money. Nobody wants to get sold something. You know, just share your passion about diving, liverboards, night dives, what's out there, what's new, what's more. How can I enjoy it even more? And then of course people want to have that and want to follow you. So you become more successful. They become better divers. Win-win situation for all of us. All right, guys, so the next tip uh, to be a better instructor uh, or even more better instructor, right, because you already are very good, is to have a little bit of humor, which is really, really important. Now, I thought um, maybe it is funny then to uh, kind of have a really red face right now and put a clown's nose on and stuff like that, but I don't really have to because um, uh, it is right now, I think here in Thailand, in Kotao, uh, 150 degrees. Uh, we actually started with a really good location with some good water behind us some diving stuff. And then it started raining. So we had to move to this uh, tiny little building here uh, with a kind of cool background though, but it is also extremely hot. So I am sorry if I'm sweating a little bit uh, or uh, if my face is red, but on the other hand then, hey, I wanted to turn up as a little clown with a nose, uh, which we couldn't get. So here you are, a little clown. Um, I know this was not funny at all, was it? Uh, but then again, though, um, at least try to be funny sometimes. That's the point. Um, this is the thing, you know, uh, everybody loves to be around someone that's funny. So a diving instructor and we, the most, the best diving instructors out there, we all say the same thing and people just don't get it. You have to have a little bit of humor. You know, you need to be an entertainer uh, besides being a diving instructor. But somebody says, yeah, but I am uh, a, a very good diving instructor. You know, I have amazing diving skills. I, uh, I'm always on time. I'm super organized and all that kind of stuff, which is, which is I think, very important to, to have to become a more successful diving instructor. But they are so boring. And, and trust me on this one, if you are boring, uh, people just don't want to hang around you. And, you know, they don't want to be tough for you. And to be honest, in a lot of cases, they... Um, they, they, they might not even trust you enough because some people are so strict and so boring and, uh, and they don't feel that they're caring about them at all. So, so humor, having a bit of humor relates also a little bit to the next one we're going to be talking about, which is, which is caring uh, about students, which is really important. Now, again, you might go like, yeah, but I, I don't have that humor, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to fail. No, that's not true. You know, if you have absolutely no humor at all, just have really good other attributes, uh, like having a great attitude, like being super passionate about certain things, uh, very knowledgeable, you know, about your equipment, diving, have good diving skills. All of them add together is still going to make you an amazing instructor. But yeah, topping that off with a bit of humor once in a while, that's, that's going to seal the deal. 
um, and, and being more knowledgeable and having better dive skills are all stuff that we can learn, you know? So if you're now the opposite where you think like, oh, but I don't really have all these, you know, these cool things like uh, uh, great skills on the water and things like that, then don't worry, you know, just go dive more, spend some time in the pool extra or in the, in the, in the ocean, of course, and go find water, work on those skills, you will improve. Uh, but humor is a bit harder, I guess, to learn, right? So, you know, you can, you can buy a book with some jokes, um, but yeah, it's not always diving related. So what, what my tip for this is try to assist some other uh, dive professionals out there, some other dive masters and instructors uh, on their courses. And if that means that sometimes you don't get paid for that because, you know, they, they don't maybe want to share their salary or something like that, you know, I just want to be honest to you, that happens sometimes. Then don't see that as a bad thing always, you know, like for, for maybe uh, that, that one or two courses, you're going to get uh, tons of cool information from these guys that are a long time in the industry and they all have cool little jokes and they all have stolen them from other instructors. So it's okay. Um, uh, the students don't know this. Well, maybe not because you see this video, but it doesn't matter because those jokes that you borrow from someone else become your jokes over time because you always twist it a little bit towards yourself and and, and it, they inspire new jokes as well that really come from you so we all all of us have a mixture of some jokes that have been told by other instructors some uh, adjusted jokes and some some new jokes that we came up with ourselves in certain situations with uh, with diving in our students um, so it, it, it's not that hard and also the jokes don't have to be super good like I just gave you a really bad joke about my my red face um, but uh, my clown's nose things like that but I really wanted to do it because I wanted to show you that even something that's silly and stupid will make you probably giggle a little bit behind this uh, uh, screen and and that's something as well in diving like I have said certain jokes where the moment it came out of my mouth I just went like oh my god I just burned myself but then I actually saw all my students from all ages uh, giggling and, and some of them even laughing. And I think that has to do as well as because they're all so, you know, they're so, um, how you say that? They're, 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 they're in a new era. They're new in an area, I think it's better to say, you know, they're about to go scuba diving. They're going to enter a new world. They're all, all nervous. Even the strongest one are a little bit nervous. And I think you're the one that they really look up to. You're the one that they, they really feel like, okay, let's keep them safe. And, you know, and then sometimes some, some everything is serious and some of the information can be a bit scary, like uh, holding your breath and all that stuff. And then, and then suddenly you make this cool little joke and it just, oh, it lightens the mood and everybody doesn't see everything that's scary anymore. And, and that's another thing that's so important. It really gives them that sort of like, um, how you say that, that motivation to, to jump in that water. You know, if you just make a little joke out of something, like jumping in the water, how scary is it going to be that? You know, what can really happen? Come on, you made a joke about it. It's probably not somebody dying from this jumping in the water on a daily basis then anymore, right? So that, that's how they think in their mind. Uh, so uh, try to uh, uh, assist some courses or, or even just, you know, go and buy an, another cool instructor, a, a fruit juice, uh, you know, a coconut or probably in some cases a nice beer at sunset and and say hey would you mind sharing some of those cool jokes with me and i'll i'll get you that drink um and and of course everybody would love to would love to help you with that okay so being a little bit funny is really cool uh lightens the mood people like you more want to follow you more and most importantly it lowers stress levels and it just makes diving safer uh, i know right being humorous what does that to do with safety well absolutely everything so uh, try to work on that if you can. All right, let's move to the next tip to become a more successful diving instructor. Uh, tip number four, which is also uh, a very important one to become a more successful diving instructor, um, is to, 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 to care about others, you know, be, be a caring, caring diving instructor. And um, this is so important because what you know, a lot of us don't always realize is, is, is how nervous some of the students really are to do this, you know, and there's so many people that, that feel ashamed and they, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to hold themselves up and, you know, they won't admit it. So they're walking around even a little bit sometimes with a, you know, with a, uh, an, an arrogant attitude going, oh, I'm going to go stupid diving. This is not going to be difficult, whatever. But, but deep down inside, <laughs> they're really, really nervous or even scared. Um, and, and not just for the open water, you know, it's the, a lot of people are scared to just go into the pool, even into the shallow end of the pool. 
Um, so understanding this makes you a much more caring diving instructor and that's what those nervous people want. Can you imagine if you were the student that's a little bit nervous? You know, what's the number one thing you want? Do you, do you really want to have the most funniest instructor right now? Do you want to have the one that's super passionate? Of course you do, but down the road, you know, during the course, when, when you get less nervous, when you get better, when you did more skills, then they're opening up for humor and, and passion. But in the beginning, the ones that are nervous, they, they don't care about anything. They just want to stay alive. And, and they want you to keep them alive. And that's why it's so important to um, to to care because if you fakely try to you know care about people like oh it's gonna be okay and oh don't worry about it you know put that arm around him it's gonna be follow me you know then they go like oh okay 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 and they still thinking about all these all these all these scenarios that might might go wrong and, and how to solve them by themselves but if you recognize that people are a little bit nervous or scared and a lot of times you know with a bit of experience you can see it deep down in their eyes um, or, or or when you just feel something is off you know just pull them aside never in front of the group of course but pull them aside and sit them down have a cup of coffee put an arm around them and say hey what's up you know like I, I, is there anything you want to tell me is there anything you know that you're that worried about um, and, and, and most of them they do really open up then and they kind of go like oh you know it's it's it went well yesterday in the pool but i mean now we're going into real stuff and i know you told me it's shallow but i'm actually a bit worried about the fish and i've you know always been scared about fish and uh scary shark movies and you know and then yeah you can then laugh about them or say oh it's gonna be fights just fish whatever but that's gonna make them even more nervous or definitely don't want to trust you or 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 even want to cancel you know like uh, just just put yourself into their the shoes are one same, but maybe fins. Yeah, put yourself in the fins. Ah, little stupid instructor joke right there. Um, anyway, put yourself into their into their fins and uh, and and try to feel uh, what they're nervous about. And and if they say they're nervous about fish, then then maybe you can uh, uh, relate to that. That's really important. Relate to them. You know, say, oh, that's that's okay. You know, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are nervous about fish. Not in a way that you know it's not about them anymore, but just 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 to let them know that they're not alone. And and uh, to be honest, like I, I grew up in the, the, the scary, you know, jaws, sharks eat people, you know, um, a generation. And, and, and of course I thought, you know, I was worried about sharks also. And now, now I learned that, that, it's, that it's pretty much the opposite around. And the sharks are in real trouble because of us and, and they're incredible creatures. And that, uh, that, of course, in the end, instead of shark, you know, it's not, uh, it, it can hurt you if it wants you, but it, it most of them doesn't want it. And, if you don't provoke it and take some distance and stuff like that, it will be a life-changing experience to see some of the most beautiful creatures down there. And if you explain it to your students, you know they're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna understand that not only it's gonna be less scary, but they're gonna understand that you care about them. You took the time to talk to them uh, about their fears. You know? And when you are uh, in the in the pool or confined open water, you know, and somebody. You know, a lot of people that have issues with clearing a mask, they breathe a little bit of water in their nose and, you know, they might cough a bit, they might stand up, you know, in the shallow end and they might uh, w not want to do it anymore or start to overthink everything. And, and, and you know, it only takes that, that one hand on their shoulder sometimes and say, hey, you know, don't worry about it. Give it some time. When they, when they kind of look up, you know, like look them in the eyes and have those nice eyes, you know, not don't squeeze them in the shoulder and go like, hey, what's wrong with you, you know, get a grip, <laughs> it's into your mouth, out through your nose, you know, how difficult can it be? Um, I, yeah, I know that sounds harsh, but I've seen instructors do that. And of course you're going to lose your students or, or some of them might make it, but they, they're, they're going to be instructors or, or divers and then instructors maybe one day with that attitude also. So you, you, you really want to be nice. You want to give them time. Um, not too long that they start to overthink these skills, I guess, but th those are tips for another video. But you want to care about them, understand the stress that they're going through. Um, it does help if you had a bit of stress yourself when you were a, a beginner diver. Um, me, for example, I had a couple of moments in my open water course that um, I wasn't that good. Um, and I, I know a lot of, some of my friends that are watching this right now, you probably go like, he's still not good, haha. <laughs> um, but, but those days were different. And uh, um, yeah, I was, I was definitely nervous for a couple of things. But I had a great instructor, instructor took care of me um, and, and really cared about me. And, and that was the reason for me not to quit and keep going. And n now, 
not only uh, did I became an instructor, that I got that far because I've kept going, but I understand completely how it feels to be nervous and how, how incredible it feels to have a fantastic instructor that takes care of you, that cares about you. Uh, and that inspired me to, to do that to my future students and, and that helped me to become more successful, right? Um, so yeah, so caring is really important. Um, and there's not really a course you can follow how to be more caring. So I guess just being a nice person and just try to understand the, the nervousness, the fear that they're going through and, um, and, and, and give them some great time. Uh, I've, 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 I've once had to sit for an extra two hours in the end of the day after a swimming pool session to, to talk with one of my students to get them inspired to go on to their next dive. And uh, it was two extra hours. I was tired. It's a long day and I really wanted to go home. But I, I, I was more happy sitting there talking to my student and trying to convince that person to keep going than to just be at home, I guess, and playing PlayStation. That I do also like. But caring about students, I like more. Right? And I think that's important as well. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, what is the next tip that we need? Uh, to become a more successful diving instructor, the next really good attribute to have is uh, again also related again to caring, and that is having uh, lots and lots of patience. All right, we are almost to the end of our six uh, attributes to have to become a more successful diving instructor, and uh, this one is patience number. Five. Now, patience is very related that we just talked about caring uh, because I'm going to tell you right now, um, and if you're already an experienced diving instructor, you already know, of course, but you need patience uh, to be a good diving instructor. And, and I think patience is important for, uh, for, for any teacher, um, but almost even more for, 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 for a diving instructor. Uh, again, a lot of our students, they are scared. A lot of them, they, they don't actually want to do this diving thing. You know, it's, a, it's because their boyfriend or girlfriend wants to do it. You know, they have a partner that doesn't want to do it and they're sort of like, oh, I don't want to be alone on the beach. So let's just, let's just stick around for the next couple of days with this diving thing, you know. But with that kind of attitude that the students then have wrong, uh, they are not willing to learn. And, and, and for that reason, they, uh, they, they can sometimes, yeah, take the, um, a lot of energy in a very polite way of saying from you. So you have the people with bad attitudes that are making your life uh, uh, difficult during teaching. You have uh, people that are very nervous and they, uh, and, they, and they keep wanting to quit and you need to have patience to, to keep staying nice and to keep caring and to keep trying to get them into uh, the course and continue the course. Um, then you have people that are just not so good in motor skills. They're not so good in the skills itself. So. You know, they can be fantastic students, super good attitudes. They are very knowledgeable, very easy on the, on the classroom stuff and, and exams. But then, you know, their skills are not so good. Um, and uh, yeah, then, then it, it takes, takes, takes time and everything takes time. You know, it depends on where you teach in the world as well. We don't always have the luxury of, you know, doing a three month open water diver course. So we, we sort of kind of need to get that swimming pool session down within, you know, uh, a, s a certain amount of time. And, and that can give some stress sometimes to us as well. And that, again, loses patience. Um, and, then, and then who's going to cause more time on that session is a student that can't do a skill. You know, they, they breathe in water again in the nose, they, they go to do the service, you have to calm them down, you have to sort of give them tips and, and let's try it again. And poof, they do it again and again and again. And, and there you go, you have, a, you have a, a nice group to teach. You know, you have uh, uh, six students and all five are superstars and this one person, you know, keeps having that issue. And, and that causes a lot of time. And, and now your pressure is building up again, you know, will I be able to be, be finished on time? But also, will the other students not be bored down there because they have to wait or, 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 or things like that? So um, you, you really need a lot of patience to sort of deal with all of these situations. Um, and another, another thing as well that I've seen is, is people that have a, something just happened in their private lives. So in the end, you know, we're not diving instructors 24 seven, you know, we, we, we do, uh, have private lives where y you know you might have uh, a bad day because you have an issue with your friend or or your your boring girlfriend or um, you know uh, you just you just hear some bad news from from your family or you know you uh, f financial issue or an, a, another 
another insurance fee came along that you didn't expect. You know, we, we, we've, we've seen this. And then you go to work as a diving instructor and you're so busy with this stress, your personal stress, that, that when then a student does something wrong, that normally is just normally part of the job, that, that suddenly uh, you lose that patience much more sooner than others, right? So it's really important to have that patience at all times. And I can tell you, uh, it's not always easy. I will admit that to you as well. Doesn't matter how nice you are and how much you care and whatever, we all have a bad day sometimes. And, uh, and, and I think that's what I like about a, a regulator, you know, the, the second stage mouthpiece. Um, you can kind of bite on it, which is uh, kind of cool. So sometimes on the water, when something happens that's a bit frustrating, you kind of go like, and then two seconds later, you're real, not fake your real caring big smile comes back on and uh and that hand goes on the shoulder whenever it's needed to with the student and and you solve the problem and and you move on so uh that's another cool tip that's an that's a freebie here uh you can uh bite uh on your regulator if you uh lose your patience but remember guys uh and girls only for a few seconds because uh, a fantastic diving instructor never ever ever loses their patience for more than one or two seconds and whatever happens you never ever ever show that to your uh, to your students okay very important all right and now we come to the last uh, of our uh, six um, fantastic attributes to have as a diving instructor and uh, that is to be a safe diving instructor now when we started this video or th these videos in the beginning um, I already said there are so many more attributes out there and I just literally came to the conclusion that I'm gonna uh, make more videos with more attributes out there in the future uh, because uh, again they're all important but I think these six are the, the top ones you should have and it gives you a huge edge over diving instructors that are not using or, or not having these uh, six attributes. Um, so, so being a safe diving instructor is really, really important as well. And the thing is, is that all the other ones, like for example, uh, the, the humor, the caring, the having patience, they all relate to having a great attitude uh, in the end. Um, but, but being a safe diving instructor, that is something that is uh, a great attitude, but it's also a bit of knowledge and it's also skills um, together. So now we're combining uh, 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 knowledge and skills and, um, and, and attitude together into one, uh, and that will make you a safe diving instructor. If you only do one, you're, you're, you're not that safe diving instructor that people uh, trust and, and, f and, and would follow to the, to the end of that ocean. Um, now, the, the, why do some bad diving instructors um, that, that are not so safety minded get away with uh, still students loving them and, you know, want to continue with the next courses and, and, you know, getting like good reviews and, and all that kind of stuff. But, but, you know, some of us, you know, that are around the professionals, we kind of look at it and go, oh my God, this diving instructor does that and that's wrong and that's not safe. But but still they're very successful. And that's because they have all the other stuff. They have that st super funny and they have uh, they care a lot and all that kind of stuff. But, but you know, in the end, they just do these um, unsafe, silly things under the water. And it doesn't mean that if you're unsafe that, you, that your students will get injured or they will uh, uh, even worse, maybe lose their lives. Um, but you are, uh, you are increasing the chance massively. And uh, if it goes wrong, it only has to go wrong once, I can tell you. And not only is that, of course, extremely bad for the, 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 the person itself that got injured in this case uh, and their family members, but it is very bad also for you, uh, for your own hopefully feeling inside when you hurt someone. Um, but even if you even lack that stuff as a bad instructor, you really just don't care about anybody, uh, it will definitely hurt your career and it will end it very, very quickly. Um, so if you only care about yourself, which is not good, and you're not gonna be a successful diving instructor, then still you should be a safe diving instructor because um, yeah, it's, 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 everything goes wrong when somebody gets injured. Um, and, and that's why sometimes I, I say, okay, you need to be funny, you need to care and all that stuff, but you can only do all of that if you are a safe diving instructor. Then, only then can you start focusing on the other stuff. And people say, yeah, but you said that all oh, you need to have a good attitude before all that other stuff. Yeah, but that's related to being a safe diving instructor. Because 
I, I really truly believe out of my experience seeing and working together with hundreds of other dive professionals around the world uh, the ones with the bad attitudes by far are, are also the most unsafe uh, diving instructors out there uh, because they just they just really don't care about um, the, the lives and safety of somebody else but also they, they can't visualize uh, all the all the different things that might can go wrong when they do a certain thing with their students, you know, in in the in the in the water with skills or uh, whatever they say to them in the classroom, they just they just think very sh short minded. So it's like, all right, you know, I'm going to go on in the water and I'm going to swim to a little tunnel, uh, a swim to that is borderline sort of like almost like a cave with an exit and, um, and and of course it's beautiful to go through it it's beautiful to to see all the the corals inside around you like you're almost in a movie you know camera and, and I know it's a cool experience but uh, you know they, they they take these students through that nobody really gets injured that justifies what they did they think it's going to be safe all the time and that's that's how far they think they know that people loved it as most uh, as that dive. They, they maybe won't even want to do the next course. And the instructor can make more money with that and everybody's happy. But if you think a little bit farther and you think, okay, let, let's just get a piece of paper and a pen and let's write down all the things that can go wrong when I take them to that little tunnel. Um, then you can very quickly see, okay, they might, they might scratch themselves on the, on the wall or corals. Uh, that might hurt the corals uh, as well that has been there for maybe uh, I don't know how long, decades, hundreds of years, thousands of years. Um, and it might destroy an entire uh, ecosystem within that tunnel. Uh, we've seen that as well, where a lot of the corals, that when you damage one, it will influence the, 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 the others. Um, maybe because they scratch themselves on something in that tunnel, uh, it might be poisonous. And, and what if it's not poisonous and even then they just get a little you know, sting, um, they might freak out, they go up uh, or they float up and there's a, a ceiling above them. And now they panic because of that situation, because they feel entrapped in something in front of them are students, behind them are students. Um, so to, to go to these tunnels, but I know it's a whole video for another day, you need to do, I, in my belief, proper training. You know, you need to do proper cave courses and things like that. What I'm trying to say is, is that a lot of the not so successful diving instructors, they, they don't think that far, right? They just think, oh, I'm gonna take them to the tunnel, they love it, I've done it before, and that's it, let's have a, you know, a drink in the end of the day with sunset and let's do another course. So if you want to work on becoming a more safer diving instructor, get yourself a pen and paper and uh, or, or, of course, uh, have more eco-friendly, get yourself a, uh, a laptop or a phone or a tablet or whatever you like to use and, and make notes and, and go in your mind through the dive, you know, go through the swimming pool session, go through uh, dive number one, dive number two of the open water course, but, but also other courses, advanced, rescue, whatever courses are out there, just, just go through those dives and just write down all the possible things that can go wrong with one of your students, you know, and then uh, try to stay away from that. I know you might go right now, yeah, but come on, it becomes a little bit, you know, a little bit boring then, you know, some of these dives and, and uh, um, you know, all these people do all these kind of fun stuff and, and I won't anymore. But don't forget that the students don't know that, you know, they, do you really think that these people come to a dive shop and they, they pay all that money to, to go to these tunnels and to do all these all these crazy jumps off the boat and you know uh, play around with aquatic life that uh, you know might not be poisonous but uh, they don't know all of that and and you know you really think they want to do this they want to pay money for that no they don't they don't know about it do everything proper do everything by the book follow the standards of your training organization um, and 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 when you start doing that you find out your students still have a fitness camp and they, and, they, and, they, and they can scream when they come up because what's the ultimate thing that they want after diving? Not only to stay safe and alive, which is really important to them, but to, to maybe see some cool stuff as well. And if you're in an area where you have lots of fish and you have lots of corals and all that kind of stuff, then um, that's what they want to see. And, and when you spend time on your dive to do all this funny stuff, this more dangerous stuff, you're going to take it away from their time to look at cool fish or to find cool fish, especially in, in areas where you don't have so much aquatic life, right? So uh, I can tell you already, when they see that stingray for the first time or an angelfish or even a tiny little brown fish uh, on, on a uh, maybe less interesting dive site, for them, that is the ultimate goal. And they didn't even enjoy that amazingly beautiful life, but they did it while staying safe, while staying alive and, 
and this not only makes them enjoy it, but they now go, wow, my instructor did everything in their power to keep me alive, and I, I'm ready to see more. I want to do the next course. I want to become a diver. And that's because you uh, not only kept them alive and, and, and you know, didn't get them injured, but they, they know that you did it. They can feel it. And, and especially as the couple of other instructors around you that might do some more silly stuff, then um, uh, they actually kind of appreciate it as well. They kind of say, I've, I've heard this a few times where people c came up and they said, well, you know, I saw some of the other instructors doing some stuff and we are not. And first I thought you were a bit boring. Uh, and I was like, oh, thank you. But actually now in the end, it, it, it's the reason why we want to continue with the next course. Um, and especially me, because, you know, I was nervous in the pool and look at me now, I just completed an open water course. So um, again, being a safe instructor is an absolute win-win. Uh, I can talk about this one for hours and hours and hours as well, and I will, I will. I will make tons of uh, videos about different topics, uh, how to improve your, um, your safety with your students. Uh, but for now, I think it's, uh, it's enough. And um, I hope that these uh, six tips I just gave you uh, will, will help. Uh, a lot of it you might have already known, of course, um, and, and you, might, you, you might get a little bit out of this video. Uh, but, um, but I hope it helped. And again, I will be going into more topics in the future. Now, remember, if you like these videos and these tips, then please uh, smash that like button because it's going to help this video to move up with Google and, uh, and, and rankings, which means that more people can see this video. And uh, that means that we can give these tips to more people as well. Plus, it's just a personal compliment. I, I, you know, I, I kind of like seeing that little like number going up. So uh, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, but, but even more importantly, don't forget to subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button and, uh, and hitting that notification bell. That's really important because then you get a notification for every time um, we, uh, we upload a video uh, in the future. So that's really cool. But uh, I, even more important to me, like I said, I love to be around students and teach students and, and improve on things myself. And I know that you guys have fantastic tips yourself that really work well for you to become more successful. So there is a comment section down here. So please leave a little comment. You know, if you liked it, say, I loved it. Um, uh, if you didn't like it, say, oh, I didn't like a certain you know, tip. That's okay too. And maybe I can reply on that and we can, we can see if we can learn from each other. But uh, even more important is uh, if you know something really cool, then please put it in the comments below because not only other people can learn from that, but I can learn from that as well. And I, I love to uh, always improve my skills as a diving instructor also. So that will be awesome. Now, to finalize this, I know there's a lot of information, but um, if you want to become a diving instructor yourself, so you, uh, you, you're watching this thinking, should I become a diving instructor? Then again, I teach monthly IDC courses. Uh, so in the description below, I have a link uh, of my website. Uh, please check it out. Lots of lots of cool information on how to sign up for the course. And uh, then please get in contact with me through the website uh, by, uh, you know, sending me an email. But you can contact me also by, uh, you know, things like WhatsApp, uh, Messenger. We can call each other, you know, send a, uh, a, a postal pigeon uh, or do some smoke signals. I don't care. Uh, I am ready to chat with you and to discuss uh, your future becoming a diving instructor. So don't forget to check out that link. And enjoy diving, enjoy teaching, enjoy your students and become more successful. All right, bye-bye.